You're watching a clip from the club podcast. Make sure you follow it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and give it a five-star review. What's happening, everyone, and welcome to the club. We have a wonderful clip on its way to you right now. But before we get into it, I need to let you know that this clip is brought to you and powered by the wonderful people of NordVPN. It is an incredible service and it is so affordable. It's so cheap. It is comparable to the price of one cup of coffee. So make sure that you head over to NordVPN for all of your VPN needs. One account will equal to six devices. So you sign up with one account and six different devices can access NordVPN. It is so affordable. It is so cheap. It is such a wonderful service. I cannot recommend it highly enough. And the best part is there is zero jeopardy. Basically, if you try it out and for some reason you don't like it, there is a 30 day money back guarantee. Crucially, too, if you want to see goals, if you ever tune into Twitter on social media and the goal is geographically restricted, that's no longer a problem. It is the gift that keeps giving. Thank you so much to NordVPN. NordVPN have been kind enough to partner with us and support the club. We would ask that you would support them for all of your VPN needs. Let's start off with Chelsea then, because ultimately Chelsea have got no identity. You're losing to rivals where even in bad off seasons, Chelsea can always pick up at least a draw, at least a gritty 1-0 in times of hardship. And you felt soft. You felt you felt like a yeah, lack of identity, a lack of power. There was a kind of powerlessness in the game against Spurs, which you're, 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 we're not talking about Arsenal, who are fantastic. Mm. Even a Liverpool in their day can do that. But we're talking about Spurs who've been dross this season. You know, what's your kind of initial summary of, I of think, where you are? I think it's very difficult at the moment because... Like, I'm actually upset. Like, it's gone beyond, you know, you know, I think the stages of, of uh, issues with the manager, you go from being supportive, then you get irate, then you just become almost numb, almost pained, almost expectant of a lack of desire, a lack of fight. You know, the words that you were using just when you were talking about it, they're so appropriate. You know, those words that the stats can't quantify, you know, those words that really do matter fire, heart, hunger, passion. There's no stat that can quantify that. There's no there's no way that you can measure how much desire there was from Chelsea to win the game. Yeah. But as soon as you watch it, you can see that there is none. And you use the word identity. I think that is completely accurate. I think Graham Potter doesn't instill any sort of belief, any sort of confidence. I think the chopping and changing with his starting 11 is, is terribly worrying. Mm. I, I don't think he has a clue exactly what his best team is even even a shadow of it mm -hmm. like I don't think he knows whose best position is what I really don't think he knows we got beat the other day uh, we got beat last week which is obviously the moment that I decided it was completely unacceptable losing at home to Southampton is totally and utterly unacceptable crazy he made a load of changes mm. wholesale changes six I think nothing's changed mm. nothing actually changed Chelsea got battered by Southampton yeah. at home we got battered by Tottenham away yeah Ultimately, you're changing personnel, you're changing uh, tactics, you're, you're changing the shape of the team. But there is this constant malaise and this constant lack of desire and all of those things that I think are so important. The, the average fellow now who's mm. into football in our world, right? Mm -hmm. You know what it's like, Booth, it's very hipstery and people like things like XG and that. <laughs> but you know the things that really matter? Mm. Do you want it more than him. Yeah. Are you more Basics. up for it than him? Basics. Yeah. Going into a challenge with power, mm. playing the ball hard to feet, um, finding the corners of the goal. You look at Kai Havertz, who, who kind of shoots shoots, uh, shoots uh, on goal with a kind of softness, with a kind of... We are soft. Do you know, yeah, you know if you were side. to use... We're soft. Do you, I'd want to play you tomorrow. Do you know, do you know what? I, I just don't really know how this is solved because there's so much wrong with the team. There's so much wrong with the club. Mm. But... I think it's probably slightly harsh to put the entire blame on Graham Potter. If you said the word malaise, and malaise obviously is kind of a word that you associate with a longer term outlook. You know, I think malaise since the, the Ukraine issue with uh, Abramovich having to leave the club and the kind of issue of who's going to own the club. Could it go back to as far as that? I mean, there's been a lot of players that have obviously seen that, been there. You know, no, that, I, that must be some sort of malaise. Is there a kind of hangover since the Champions League final? A lot of Chelsea fans talk about that, the lack of improvement since that final win against Man City, obviously a couple of years ago now. You know, I think there is fundamental malaise in kind of the, the squad. And then you bring someone like Enzo Fernandez in, that good example of, you know, very promising young midfielder brought in 
to a side that hasn't seen much change, in, in, especially in midfield. Hmm. You know, you're still relying on a fullback in Reese James to have the impetus for, for Chelsea. It, so, if no, uh, as much Chelsea's as Graham Potter is an issue right now, I think longer term there is. I think Malaise is completely the right word. I think, I think the Chelsea's recruitment over the recent windows, over the years. So, so even if you go back to say Lampard's last window, hmm. which would have been the window of Werner, Havertz, etc. I think that was terrible. Mm. I think that the the summer window that we just had, the Cucurella window, let's mm. call it that, the Cucurella Koulibaly. I mean, this is just appalling, like appalling. It like uh, as me. bad, you know, you spend, it's almost the impossible achievement, isn't it? Because you spend half a billion quid mm. and you get worse. Mm. Like that's almost impossible in any world. You know, if I were to give you half a billion quid, yeah. whatever you were to turn your hand to you would yeah. almost definitely excel at it and make yeah. money and improve I'd start a club with Wayne Lineker and Ibiza and that'd be fantastic and my it, life would improve and I would love to be on that guest list. yeah or you would be number one and presumably it would be a success because you would have half a billion quid <laughs> I don't understand how Chelsea have managed to spend half a billion and get it so wrong but it, if you want to talk about the impact of Abramovich I think there's a place for it if you want to talk about the impact of uh, Todd Bowley Clear Lake Igbali I think there's a place for it I think if we look at individual footballers in individual output mm. so many players are letting the club the badge and themselves down yeah but but mm. we have an idiot in the dugout and therefore everything else is incidental mm. is are there issues with Bowley absolutely yeah but we have an idiot in the dugout so that takes precedence should uh, certain players in the squad be playing to a higher level should Kai Havertz be scoring more goals yes but we have an idiot in the dugout and therefore it becomes incidental. Mm -hmm. Everything is almost on the back burner. Everything is almost unimportant until we get the right man in charge of these players. Yeah. And currently, Graham Potter is so far out of his depth. It's mm -hmm. unreal. Like, I, don't, I don't want this to sound sort of hyperbolic and I genuinely don't mean it to be. But Chelsea's form would suggest that... Look, I don't, I don't want to talk out of turn here, but in the last 15 games, we're in the relegation zone. <laughs> we have scored six goals in 12 games. Mm. Nobody, not Southampton, mm. not Bournemouth, nobody has scored less in the last 12 games than Chelsea. At what point, look, Chelsea have a huge cushion on the relegation zone. But if we continue losing game after game, if we continue on the trajectory that we've been on, we've won two, two games in the last 15 if that yeah. mimics itself, you go down. Yeah, 100%. So at what point do we make a change? At what point do we look at this and go, this is totally untenable? Do you know what I think Graham Potter will have not necessarily realised, and I don't think the club will have realised? All of the teams over recent years, even the underperforming teams, mm. even the underperforming managers, do you know what they all really did understand? The importance of beating Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. No matter what, yeah. no matter what, it's so fundamental to your identity. It's fundamental to who we are, yeah. and and it and it was really embraced. You know, if you were to ever listen to Seth Fabregas talk about playing Tottenham, oh yeah. If you were to ever listen to Eden Hazard yeah. talk about playing Tottenham, they, Costa got it. Costa got they really Drogba. got it, and and that is applicable to every Chelsea team over the years. Yeah. Even previous man, like Thomas Tuchel. Mm. So I'll give you a perfect example to demonstrate how important the Tottenham game is, and how they, the players and the previous managers, whoever they were, understood it. This year. Chelsea were terrible under Tuchel mm. this year. Seven yeah. games that he managed, terrible. We lost to Leeds United away from home. We lost 3-0. Mm -hmm. We lost to Southampton away from home. We lost 2-1. We played Tottenham and we should have won. We, mm -hmm. we drew two walls. Remember, Cucurella's hair was pulled. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, right at the start. Yeah. Right at the start. Yeah. But even the Tuchel team that was falling apart, we're losing at Leeds, we're losing at Southampton, we should have beaten Tottenham. Yeah. And they played well. We played it's probably one of our best performances this season. Yeah, yeah. Played well. Yeah. Everybody understands that beating Tottenham is important and you're right. It's fundamental to who we are. Yeah. What is happening here is totally unacceptable. And do you know what I think the new board and Potter won't have realised? The reaction from the fans to losing to Tottenham, you know, even the most generous, mm. even the even the fan that potentially wanted Potter to remain, even the fan that was open to the idea of Graham Potter losing a lot this year, even that fan yeah. has now gone... Almost the football purist, because yeah. I think when Guardiola came to Man City, we got pummeled a lot. We lo I remember we went to, I went to uh, Leicester City away in the rain, Jamie Vardy scored a couple, we lost 4-1. But you could see 
I know, I know it's Bravo and goal shocking, but you see John Stones playing out from the back. You could see a bit of Ilkay Gundogan, Leroy Sane, and they became the kind of bedrock of what obviously became very good success, you know, later on. It, you know, the, the philosophy was there early. Mm. The worrying thing for Graham Potter for me is if you'd lost 2-0, but you're knocking the ball around, it's a really progressive kind of, you had a couple of centre-backs spread wide, knocking the ball around, you got caught on the break. There's some sort of more sort of kind of philosophical yeah. footballing identity. Yeah. But you're not hard, you're not hard to play against. You're not rugged. You're not a counter-attacking side. Yeah. And you're not good on the ball either. Yeah. You know, and, and there's even the third option of just being gung ho. Let's play four. Let's play two wingers, two strikers. Go high, mm. go long. Do, do you know Doesn't what? I happen think, much do you know what I think everyone can that. take, Boo. I think this isn't about Chelsea. Chelsea fans are definitely like this, but I think most football fans will empathise with what I'm about to say. Unless you are a Manchester United fan or a Liverpool fan or a very modern City fan, winning isn't really the be all and end all. And Chelsea fans, particularly of my generation, isn't about that. Like, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Like, it doesn't matter. What matters is the performance. What matters is the approach. What matters is the pride in the badge. And what matters is beating Tottenham. Mm. And we're always all right with that. So, you know, if we'd, you know, if we'd fought tooth and nail to get a result today and it had been a scrap and it was just, you know, a real intense yeah, affair. Yeah, like it was when they beat, like, they, they didn't beat us for such a long time and then they beat us at uh, White Hart Lane. Aaron Lennon cut in and scored. Ashley Cole on the floor. That was like a give and take game, a back and forth, a swashbuckling derby. Take it, take and, it. and ultimately we came up short for the mm. first time in, what, 16 years. You're disappointed, you're heartbroken, you're angry, you're all of the emotions that you don't want to be after a football match. But there's pride and you move on and we won the league mm. that year. Mm. This isn't that. Do you know? Do you know how I should be on this podcast? We're doing a podcast in the aftermath of Chelsea losing to Tottenham. Do you know what I should be doing? Maybe swearing, maybe angry, maybe not able to do it. Maybe to just go boom. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'll do. Let's do. Can you free tomorrow? Let's do it tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe all of those things, or maybe ranting a bit, and you have to really control it. Yeah. But do you know, I feel like I could kind of sit here and I could easily have something a pint about it. And, and it's yeah. Almost tepid and kind of yeah. It's soft. it's flat because what it's done is there's no passion in the team. There's no passion in the manager. There's no ambition in the team. There's definitely no ambition in the manager. We're lost, he's lost, and ultimately there's a floundering feeling mm. to being a Chelsea fan mm. at the moment. And until they get rid of the manager, until Graham Potter is sacked, and, and it should be that. It should be like quite you know, the violent action of sacking. That's what he deserves. Like this isn't what do they call it? You know, when managers part ways rather than being sacked. Yeah, he needs terminate, to we've agreed, we've agreed to per terminate. What saying. I'm saying, yeah, launch, launched, a, launched a, out. A out. Launched well. out. You know the way yeah. you know the way a girlfriend reacts when you've when a fella's been caught cheating and a fella gets home and all the yeah. clothes are on the yeah. floor on the yeah. front lawn yeah. and all that. Cut up and all that, yeah, yeah. That's what should happen to yeah. Graham Potter's clothing at Chelsea. Yeah. Graham Potter should be thrown out and all of his all of his belongings should be strewn across Cobham Green. Do you look at the the transfers in January and, and I know a lot of them were obviously a lot of money. Was it too much? Because he's had to not only get to grips with a squad that are already very experienced, you, you know, Graham Potter's has to go in there and put his arm around Thiago Silva, for example. He's never had to do that before. But then you've got, you've got six or seven mercenaries almost coming in and, you know, they don't really know the club. Yeah. You know, they're finding their feet. Is it too much? Is it too, too much? much? Okay, too much by what definition? So, so yes, I think it is too yeah. much. But, but on what scale? So is it too much? Is it, is it a lot of pressure for the manager? Yeah. But is it too much to beat Southampton at home? No, yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Is it too much to maybe win the league? Yeah. Is yeah, it too yeah. much to compete for the league? Yeah. yeah. Is it too much even when he came in to guarantee top four? Should mm. Maybe. Maybe we would take that. Mm. You know, if we finished sixth, tried for top four, didn't quite work out. Mm. Maybe got to the last eight of the Champions League and fine. But not this. Yeah. Not this. He's not really handicapped, mate, with that. I think any, you could be bottom of League Two, you could be top of the Championship, whatever it is. It's always down to the, the ability to score goals at any level of football. And Chelsea don't have the ability to score goals. You've obviously scored, I think it's two in five, two in but six. But this is managerial, you, you You created a lot of chances in, in, in Germany. You did. You created a lot of chances against Dortmund mm. in the Champions League. I think any manager struggles when you've got Kai Havertz up front. I refuse to believe he's kind of this pr prodigious false nine talent. He's, Rep and you, 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 would believe, you, you agree with me on that. Guardiola, uh, his second season at City, he got 100 points in the, in the season. He could rely on Aguero to get mm. those those kind of 23, 24 goals 
they're just easy tap not, not mm. tap-ins but he makes me natural he finishes natural yeah. finishes you have no natural finishing no. ability okay. anywhere in the style 11 you are correct but again let's just demonstrate something we've scored 6 in 12 mm. so whatever you think of Kai Havertz and I don't want him anywhere near Chelsea mm. I don't think he's good enough at all yeah. we've scored 6 goals in 12 yeah Bournemouth have scored more than us. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you think of Kai Havertz, he's a better player than Kiefer Moore, right? Even Sorry had someone like Giroud to hang no, his but, hat but, but whatever you think example. of... example. The point is, whatever... It shouldn't be this bad. Even yeah. if it's bad, it shouldn't be this bad. what I'm bad. trying to say is it's not Potter's fault. No, he's it is Potter's in there. fault because there's another reason. Yeah, yeah. When Potter was at Brighton, they were the XG kings. You expect them to score goals and they don't. Mm -hmm. And what we were saying when he was at Brighton was... If they had a centre forward, they would be pinging them in. If they had someone better than Mulpai, they would be pinging Danny them in. Welbeck. But they didn't. And therefore, we put it down to just the personnel. Suddenly, he's left. This is the important bit. He's left Brighton. Since he's left Brighton, Brighton have scored literally one billion goals. Yeah, yeah. They've had the Locked ball in the, the back of the net one billion times. Yeah, without Trossard, yeah. He's come to Chelsea. As he's left Brighton, Brighton starts scoring. As he's yeah. come to Chelsea, Chelsea can't find the back of the net. And not only can we not find the back of the net, because it was never easy for us, but we are the worst scorers in the league. Six goals in 12 games as a crazy. club. It's crazy. Like, the, the, I did my best to be very supportive of Graham Potter. I really did. And I think a lot of people turned on him before me. I did, yeah. I've, I'm about a week into this. But I really wanted it to work and I really tried to... There's believe. something noble in the project. No there was something about noble it. in the project. No I question. wanted it to work. A young English manager to get that chance is very you know, good for us there as was, English fans. There was something... There was something different about Chelsea's approach yeah, yeah. and I was quite up for it. Chelsea had redefined the way that we approach football under the new owners and bringing in Graham Potter was part of that and I was up for it. Yeah. And I didn't mind it going badly. Yeah. But it can't go this badly. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think of Kai Havertz, he's not one of the worst strikers in the league. Actually he is. But he's not the worst striker in the league and we are the worst. Mm. There's goals in our team. We've yeah, all, are, you know, there there's goals Sterling's in... got six, seven, eight, nine goals in him. Yeah. 100%. Sterling he's alone. not doing anything. Sterling though. alone is six in 12. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Easy. Like, our club is Easy. six in 12. He scored 20 in all comps for Man City. And, and there's loads of things. Like, look, I don't like Aubameyang. I think it was an idiotic signing. I didn't want him to sign. It was a, like Tuchel's last gift to us that we didn't want. And I, I wouldn't want Aubameyang anywhere near Chelsea, really. But he's at the club. Chelsea can't score goals. <laughs> Graham Potter is telling us that he's training well. Aubameyang's training well. You know, he featured against Tottenham. But why didn't he feature in Dortmund? Why didn't he feature at home to Southampton? Yeah, We've Southampton, needed goals. Yeah. Yeah. We've needed goals. I don't like Aubameyang. But make your deal with the devil because that's what you got. You've got him for a few months. Paying his wages. You're paying his wages. Big wages. And you're telling us he's doing well. 100%. 100%. So, so look, overall, I just don't see how we can continue without Graham Potter. Just because I've not heard you, you say this, just to wrap up. Give me, is there a name in your head? Yeah. Rep yeah. Right, he goes tomorrow. There's is there a, a feasible name in your head? There's a trait. If I can give you a trait, I don't really mind who the person is, but yeah. I can give you a trait. Yeah. I want a winner. I want Chelsea manager. I want a Chelsea manager. Who's out there, though? To, to Zinedine do Zidane. Luis Enrique. Diego Simeone at the end of the season. Mm. Mm. A winner. Have you, what have you won? Show me what you've won. And come and be Chelsea. And you think Todd Bowley will do work? Like, we are that. Chelsea. Do you know what my mate put in a WhatsApp group that, I, that really resonated with me? He, he, he wrote, we're Chelsea, FFS. Go and get Zidane. Hmm. And I was like, do you know what? There's a, I know what, he's saying it in a WhatsApp group that's never meant to be aired, right? But effectively what he's saying is, we're Chelsea, Graham Potter getting the job. He's never deserving of that job. He didn't deserve Chelsea. He might have deserved a club more ambitious than Brighton. Yeah. But he didn't yeah. deserve that's the fair. Chelsea job. And he's got it. He's clearly not up for it. Clearly not up to the standard that is required. And therefore, Chelsea need to go and get somebody that is suited to be Chelsea manager because he doesn't talk like Chelsea manager. Mm -hmm. He doesn't act like a Chelsea manager. And the most crucial ingredient that he doesn't have in his character is the geezer is not a winner. 